Okay, so I'm going to be responding to Christy Winters in this video, which gives me that kind of feeling you get, I think, if you go down like an old country lane that you haven't been down since you were a small child. You know, that kind of warm, fuzzy feeling inside of, of going over sort of old, well-trodden ground, familiar ground that you kind of quite enjoyed. Um, and she did a hangout. Christy did a hangout with the Woolly Bumblebee recently. That's what I'm going to be responding to. I think given everything that's gone on with Woolly Bumblebee, I can't not comment on the Woolly Bumblebee. So I, I'll kind of, I'll hive her away quite appropriately until the end of the video, I think, and deal with Christy Winters first. Because that's what I need to set the record straight on. And with regard to that, let me just make a comment here, which is that I don't have a problem. If you want to block me or block anybody on any aspect of social media, whether it's YouTube or whether it's Twitter or whatever, crack on with it, right? You're absolutely entitled to do so. Sure, if you do it to kind of Shivesian levels, then people are going to take the mickey, aren't they, right? You're kind of leaving yourself open to a little bit of piss-taking there, right? But I absolutely accept your right to do that. But at the same extent, if you dredge my name up within your video and say things about I've said which misrepresent what I've said and which are just not true, right, then I'm going to want some right to reply in some format. Now, I have no right to reply on Christie's channels on her videos. And because she's blocked me from commenting on her videos, which she is absolutely unable to do, and I would uphold her right to do so, what that means is that I end up making a video. On it, right? So if you think, oh, fucking hell, he's making a video on Christy Winters here, what I would say is don't lame the blame at my door, right? I would have been happy just to have left a comment to clear this up, but that was precluded to me because Christy's decided to block me on her channel. Okay, so what this harks back to is the whole business of rape culture in a video that I'd made that Christy had responded to. She's dredged this back up again, so I'm dredging it back up again. To set the scene, first I'm just going to play you a little clip of the Woolly Bumblebee because it was the Woolly Bumblebee that first brought up rape culture within the video. The Woolly Bumblebee. And so when people are like, there's no rape culture, yeah, there is. It's just you don't, and this is the thing, you don't understand when a feminist says these things because you you know you haven't studied it you haven't really looked into what it means or you haven't even just asked you've just assumed because you've watched so and so's youtube video saying that rape culture is bullshit oh um, you know maybe you know learn a little bit <laughs> so i didn't really play that clip so i could sort of wade in uh, criticizing what the woolly bumblebee said there but while i've played you that clip i've got to say that what she says is kind of bollocks there, this suggestion that if you want to know, if you want to know what rape culture, what feminists mean by rape culture, just ask a feminist. It's kind of, it's about as naive as saying if you want to understand the Judeo-Christian perspective and history on an afterlife, just go and ask a Christian. If you go and ask a biblical historian, if you go and ask a Christian theologian worth their beans about the concepts of an afterlife and a resurrection, what they will tell you will be massively different to what the average Christian out there on the street believes and will tell you about the business of heaven and an afterlife and the soul ascending up, right? It's their absolutely poles apart. And what they are telling you is their opinion. That's all they're telling you. And in many ways, their opinion is about as ignorant as the average person who isn't a Christian. And I propose that the same thing is true on the business of rape culture. If I was to go out there and get you 20 random feminists and put them in a room and ask each and every one of them, what does the term rape culture mean? I would be able to give you 15 or 20 different explanations because that is the problem with it. I did this in an earlier video. I went and got out there several off-cited sources as to what people are talking, what feminists are talking about when they're talking about rape culture, and their definitions were different. And so overwhelmingly all-encompassing all that it seemed to incorporate pretty much fucking anything comes under the category of rape culture with regard to some of them. 
Okay, so I don't really think, I think that's a somewhat naive perspective to suggest if you want to know about rape culture, just ask a feminist. You might as well ask a non-feminist or an anti-feminist or just the bloke that lives next door, quite honestly, for the sense that you are likely to get there. But the reason that I showed the clip is because I wanted to differentiate between two things. The thing that I did in the video that Christy picked up on, which he's going to talk about in a minute, and I want to set the record straight before Christy gives you the misinformation and what the woolly bumblebee was effectively talking about. What the woolly bumblebee was saying was there are some things that we could class as coming under a heading of rape culture. And I don't dispute that. I do have some concerns as to how useful it is as a concept, but I don't dispute that you can function those things as a concept. And if you have some doubts about that, think about things such as drug culture and gun culture as your reference point. When we talk about drug culture, what are we talking about? Well, we tend to be talking about subcultures within society where there is a very, very high level of drug dependence, where there is a very, very high level of drug taking, where drug taking is pervasive almost to the point of it becoming ubiquitous. Okay, so we're talking about prevalence, about amount of drug taking, and we're also talking about the attitudes and practices and values within those subcultures. Those would be the two things that we would be talking about. Now, I have no problem talking about things in terms of rape culture in the same kind of way. I have no problem with accepting there may be some aspects of our society that may constitute things that we could reasonably describe as rape cultures and certain values and attitudes that we could describe as associated with those subcultures or those particular scenarios. But it would be one of the most grossest acts of hyperbole imaginable to describe the United Kingdom as a drug culture. Right, The whole United Kingdom is a drug culture and I've never heard anybody do it. But what I have heard people do often is describe the entire United States or the entire United Kingdom as a rape culture. And that was what I made my video to challenge. OK, so with that in mind, let me play you some Christy Winters. No, uh, this is, you know, like when um, Noel Plum made his video on rape culture and I told him I critique it. And you know, in his video, what he said was rape culture was like two statistics, one from the US, one from the UK, one about like, uh, like reported rapes and the other one about rape convictions. It was just, you know, it was about um, actual the crime of rape um, as a statistic in the population. And my response to him basically said, look, you've misoperationalized this concept. You're not me measuring rape culture. You're measuring crime. You're measuring sex crimes or sexual assaults. That's not the same thing. Oh, there's so much to say here. This is going to be hard to record and keep the video down to length. Uh, I've got to take my hat off to Christy to, to fit so much misinformation into 30 seconds there is somewhat mind shattering. Look, Christy didn't make a critique. What she did was she did, get your head around this, she did a peer review. And this is what she said before she did it. This is what she said while she was doing it. And this is what she stood by afterwards was what she did was a peer review. And the peer review took the form of a Google Hangout. Yes, a Google Hangout with two experts. She trumpeted this a few weeks in advance on one of her little Hangouts for her patrons that this is what she was going to be doing and that she was drafting in some experts that she didn't have the expertise on this field, but she was going to bring in some experts who did. And I am in the process now of, of finalizing that critique and organizing a hangout uh, in order to go over it. And in that case, what the plan is, because I've, I've asked some people to help because I don't, I'm not expert in everything. So I'm calling on other people who are a bit more familiar with other elements of the topic that they can bring their expertise. But we're going to kind of just do, I, I'm going to treat it like a peer review almost. You could imagine when I, when I came to watch this hangout, the first thing that I was interested in, what heavyweights from the academic field will she have dragged in for this? Unfortunately, it turned out to be the YouTubers Foxy Jazabelle and Demotivator Opinion, who, to his credit, immediately put his hand in the air and said, Christy, I've got to say I'm not an expert on this subject. So the ex even one of the experts admitted they weren't an expert. Christy had said that she wasn't an expert. First of all, he didn't read any of the essential texts or any of the essential articles. And that's why I haven't done a video on rape culture, because I haven't done the research 
to speak intelligently to it. And so I just keep my mouth shut. And yet in a series of comments that she left me afterwards told me that I should just shut up and listen to her because she was the expert. So even she couldn't decide whether her experts are experts or whether she was the expert or whether everybody was an expert or nobody was a fucking expert in regard to this. But the big misrepresentation here is this suggestion that I simply distilled rape culture down to one statistic of prevalence for the United Kingdom and the United States. What I did, whether it was right or wrong, was significantly more sophisticated than that. What I did was that I took the definition of rape culture that I was using. And the definition of rape culture that I was using was the one that is on the Wikipedia website. Now, one of the points that I picked up on at the time, I was very clear with everybody up front in my video that I'd used the Wikipedia definition and I explained why I used the Wikipedia definition. Why? Because one of the advantages of Wikipedia is that they pull their definitions from lots of different places. So in effect, it can become a kind of consensus definition, which is quite a useful thing to have when you don't want somebody saying, well, that isn't the definition that's generally used, blah, blah, blah. It's about as close as you're going to get. The other thing that it's useful in a conversation with Christy Winters is because Christy Winters had made a video on rape culture and she had used the Wikipedia definition of rape culture, only she wasn't quite so honest about it. When she flashed the graphic up on her screen, what she said is that she had got her definition from a somewhat highbrow uh, semi-academic work from somebody called Shana Olfman, that that was her source for this definition. In order to define my terms, I will be citing here from Alfman that fe in feminist theory, rape culture is a setting in which rape is pervasive and normalized due to societal attitudes about gender and sexuality. Um, unfortunately, as I showed in, in, in the first part of my two-part response to Christy Winters, if you actually go to that work by Shana Alfman, you will not find that definition anywhere. The only place on the internet where you will find that definition that Christy Winters uses is on Wikipedia. It is Wikipedia's bespoke definition. So why had Christy Winters quoted Shana Ulfman? Well, if you look at the references that Wikipedia had used in formulating their definition, the first of them was this work by Shana Ulfman. I can only assume that Christy Winters, who had never read Shana Rolfman, assumed that they had taken that uh, definition whole and uncut from Shana Rolfman, and wanting to make her video sound slightly more authoritative than it actually was, rather than admitting she'd got a definition from Wikipedia, she face palmingly tried to suggest that she'd taken that definition from Shana Ulfman. Unfortunately, that was not the case, and that definition appears nowhere in the work of Shana Ulfman. I've got to put it to you, right, is that the kind of person who is a fit person to carry out a peer review? I would say that they are not. That the first thing that you have to do if you're going to carry out a peer review is to at least have standards as high as those people that you are peer reviewing. If I'd done that kind of thing in my video or any work that I'd submitted for peer review, right, it would get pulled to pieces for making those kinds of obvious uh, manipulative misrepresentations in terms of sources and references, and yet Christy Winters had done that very thing. Now, what is interesting, she criticizes me for using statistics on prevalence on the amount of rape that is taking place. But bear in mind, I am using the Wikipedia definition, the same definition that she has used, what the Wikipedia definition says is that rape culture is a sociological concept used to describe a setting in which rape is pervasive and normalised due to societal attitudes. Okay, so it's about two things. It's about pervasiveness and it's about normalisation of societal attitudes. So what I did is I said, okay, let's take an approach to evaluate these cultures and look at how pervasive rape is with regards to that culture versus other cultures, that culture versus the historical rape record of that culture with regard to societal attitudes relative to other cultures with regard to societal attitudes now versus the societal attitudes in the past. 
okay? One strand of that was the statistics. She is saying that that is irrelevant to rape culture. But if you go and have a look on that Wikipedia page where that definition is from, the first image, every Wikipedia page has a headline image, and that is the image that they have chosen to best represent what is being talked about on that page. If you look at the page on Wales, the first picture you will see will be a picture of a fucking whale, right? I guarantee you it, and I haven't even checked. It's the same thing here. So what is the first image that they've chosen with regard to rape culture? It's an image showing rape rates per 100,000 of the population around the world. It's a picture showing pervasiveness. If you go down the page and go to the origins and usage of the word rape culture, what you will find on that Wikipedia page is it says, During the 1970s, second wave feminists had begun to engage in consciousness raising efforts designed to educate the public about the prevalence of rape. Previously, according to Canadian psychology professor Alexandra Rutherford, most Americans assumed that rape, incest and wife beating rarely happened. The concept of rape culture posited that rape was common and normal in American culture. So right from the outset, right from the, the formulation of the term rape culture, it was about prevalence and it was about amount of rape just as much as it was about cultural societal attitudes and normalization. If you carry on down that page, you will also find an, a, a segment all to itself about prevalence on the page of rape culture. So let me get this straight. On the Wikipedia page on rape culture, right, their bespoke definition of rape culture includes one piece after another about prevalence. But when I mention prevalence amongst other things in my video, I'm misoperationalizing Wikipedia's definition of rape culture. As I said at the time, maybe Christy Winters needs to contact Wikipedia because it seems that the writers at Wikipedia don't understand their own fucking definition and yet Christy Winters who admits that she is not an expert on this knows their definition more than they do herself. It led me to the conclusion at the time that it wasn't me that was misoperationalizing the definitions here it was Christy. Then taking up that critique, he just like made two, I think, really extended videos whining about me, you know, and it's like, that's when I, that's like when I shut down, like I made it a, a good faith effort and I didn't stuff, you know, I didn't treat him with kid, kid gloves because when you have peer review done, they don't treat you with kid gloves. They're like, look, this is wrong. So this was the bit that I watched in the video that really motivated me to make a response in the first place. And the reason was, if you'd watched what had gone on in the Hangout before then, one of the themes had been, the Woolly Bumblebee had said, oh, I've apologised to you, Christy. I've been so mean to you before, I can understand why you blocked me. I've also gone and apologised to Steve Shives. And I, and I can understand why people like Steve Shives block people. Because if you can't have some kind of constructive dialogue, if all people are doing is slagging you off, and criticizing you then why wouldn't you block people so it all came in this kind of ethos of this was one of the fundamental things they were discussing and then Christy Winters had mentioned me here and then she's talking about why she's done the same thing to me why she shut down to me right and it's as a result of these responses that I'd made and really I just I just that almost fucking blew my mind now I know there'll be some of you who are not familiar with everything that went on here and said well but hang on Jim maybe she's got a point right if she's made this video this peer review video this hour and 40 minute peer review video and then as a result of that you've made two really mean-spirited personal abusive videos as a result why wouldn't she shut down to you but the problem is, is that that's not what's happened. If that's what had happened, if she had, even if I hadn't made those abusive videos, if she had watched my videos and then shut down to me, right, then I, that's, that's one thing. But what actually happened is something very, very different, which is that although she's telling you what is in these two videos of mine, she never watched either of them. And I know that she never watched them because at the time, one thing that she couldn't stop herself doing was telling as many people as who would listen 
proudly proclaiming the fact that she wouldn't watch my videos. And even when people were leaving comments saying, I really think you ought to watch these videos because he is tackling the questions that you've asked him. He goes through them. He t lists the questions you asked and goes through them one after another. I'd also be interested, of course, to know whether you feel that I have addressed the criticisms that Christy uh, leveled at me uh, within that hangout. He lists the questions you asked and goes through them one after another. She said, oh, no, I'm not watching these videos. I haven't the time. Obviously, Christy values her time a lot more than me, right? It's okay for me to watch an hour and 40 minutes of her hangout about me, but what, I, there's no way that I can expect her to watch an hour and 20 minutes of response back to her. So the judgment that she's made is based not on the content of my videos, even though she was telling you what the content of those videos was, because she never watched those. To this day, she hasn't watched those fucking videos. So how does she know what the content of those videos actually is? That's what's mind-blowing. They discuss in this hangout about being a skeptic and what it takes to, give a good, to be a good skeptic. Let me tell you, that I watched Christie's hangout, and then I, I I made a couple of comments to her, and she said, "Just so there's no there's no uh, misunderstanding here, let me list you right the problems that I had with your video." And she listed about a dozen things. So I actually used that list within the second part of my video response to make sure that I didn't miss out anything. And I actually conceded a couple of, there was a couple of them where I said, you know what, you've got a bit of a point there. I could have done that bit better. There was a couple of them I even conceded. Now, what is the skeptical approach to, to do? Is the skeptical approach to listen to what Christie has to say and then to say, do you know what, well, she's saying that I've misoperationalized this term. And I've got to say with regard to fucking terms, if you go and Google up the word misoperationalized, which Christy Winters used in this hangout, which he used in the hangout at the time, right? You get more hits just by tapping in a random fucking, a random series of keys than you will for the word misoperationalized. So I just think that's just a clever little word she's pulled out of her ass. But in terms of misoperationalizing, she accuses me of misoperationalizing the term. So what do I do? I went and read a few more bits, including going back to the original definition, rereading the def definition, rereading the page, reading how that term has been used, going back and listening to what I said, and putting it into some kind of context, and then deciding whether I'd misoperationalized it. And as a result of that at the time, I said, no, actually, I've had to think about it. I've, I've had another look at it. I don't think I did misoperationalize the term. But actually, Christy, I think you are misoperationalizing the term. Who is the skeptic here? Me for going through that per process or Christy for putting her fingers in her ears and going, I'm not going to watch the video response that you've made. I can tell you the end result of that, which is that Christy is still making the same fucking arguments now against my original video that she was making a year ago as if I've never tackled them, as if I've never rebutted them as if I've never responded to them when I've done all of those things and rather than acknowledging and accepting and taking account of the points that I've made in response to that it's still as if no response had ever been made so I've got to ask given the criticism the smarmy arrogant criticism they make against anybody that calls themselves a skeptic how is that Christy acting as a skeptic judging the content of my video responses to her when when she couldn't even be fucking asked to watch them. I mean, they're just going to tell you what you need to do to come up to the expected standard and not whine about it. So, yeah, um, we have to have the right... When you when you say it doesn't exist, then you have to then be able to explain what we're observing with police departments that don't take it seriously. The backed up uh, rape kits, the fact that a lot of these rapists, you know, get off um, quite lightly that judges are you know blaming the victim and praising the perpetrators here how do you account for that what would you call that so this is the last point i'll make before i move on to just some quick comments on the woolly bumblebee situation but this was the exact same shitty stunt that she pulled in her peer review hangout again and again and again Recall that my video was about whether the united kingdom and the united states were best described as rape cultures and she's done the same thing again. She's just mentioned me. All she's been talking about me is a critique of me. And then she said, if you're going to go around saying that rape culture doesn't exist, I never said that. Right? 
What I said was that the United Kingdom and the United States are not best described as rape cultures and then I went to evidence why I'd arrived at that conclusion. I never said that things that could be described as rape culture do not exist. But notice how she twisted it. This was exactly the same thing she did again and again and again in her original Hangout. It was as if I'd made a, a video saying there is nothing that can be described as rape culture. That was the mistake that she made in her original Hangout. And even people that would normally side with her agreed with me on that point. She's still making the same argument again, probably because she never watched my response. Maybe you can understand how frustrating that is, that somebody would keep doing that. Look, if you want to have a bit of a fucking facepalm style laugh, all the videos in this sequence I think are quite interesting videos from my original Do We Live in a Rape Culture videos through to the Hangout, although I only watch the first half hour because it becomes dreary after that, to my responses to that. But the one that I'd have you watch, right, if you've got a few minutes to spare, because remember she didn't watch my responses, but what she did do is make a video, responses to comments from Noel Plum's response, in which rather than watching my video responses and responding to it, she read the responses on her video, Hangout, that people who had watched my video had, had made and then responded to them instead and tried to reverse engineer and work out what I must have said in my video and criticise that. I know, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It didn't make any sense when she did it, then it doesn't make any more sense now that I'm trying to describe it to you. But what I would say is, even if you don't want to watch that video that she made, go and read some of the comments and look how many people are saying, but you're saying that he hasn't tackled these... But he did. He not only tackled them, he showed us the very list that you keep showing us now. You know, what's it's as if she's having some kind of fucking mental meltdown at that particular point. It's a really insightful thing to read some of the comments that are left and, and the, the weird copy and paste responses that she made there. Okay, I'm drawing a line under that for now until she mentions it again and doesn't give me a, a chance to respond in her comments. And then it'll probably come up again in another 12 months. So what about the woolly bumblebee? So what about, what can I say about woolly bumblebee? Because this is a, a bit of a fucking mess, I've got to say, woolly. Um, I, I, I know woolly back from, no, in a very loose sense of the word, know of woolly bumblebee back since, I, I don't know, I suppose the Atheism Plus, Free Thought Blogs, shit and and then the, the forum that resulted from that in opposition to free thought box the slime pit and although i didn't used to post on that i used to read on that she was a figure with regard to all of that and in opposition to free thought blogs and then started to do more and more material on youtube and she had her certain perspectives and she always had a certain sort of free-minded approach to things and wouldn't necessarily toe the party line which i respected and i have no problem with people altering their position it is healthy for people to be able to alter their positions but I always get a little bit concerned when somebody who's over the age of about 14 or 15 utterly alters their position and, and, and just seemingly goes totally from one side to totally the other I've seen it on YouTube before it happened with a guy called Rithrandil who changed his name online name to Unseen Perfidy before exploding in a kind of sex scandal and he went from being a really obnoxious cunt right winger to being an equally really obnoxious cunt left winger. The only thing that was sort of common was his obnoxious cuntishness throughout all of that. His politics just changed absolutely diametrically. Um, and... Another example would, of course, be Brett Keane, who prior to YouTube starting was, I believe, quite a committed fundamentalist Christian and then suddenly found atheism. And he was like one of the original YouTube atheists and droned on and on and on about why Christianity was such a load of shit and made argument after argument after argument about why Christianity was such a load of shit and why Christians were such a load of wankers. And then all of a sudden decided, actually, no, that's not true. And Christianity is true. And I'm going to be a Christian again. And this is why Christianity is the best thing since sliced bread and why atheists are such a load of absolute wankers. And I... I 
I absolutely accept people's right to do that, but it's hard for me to take people seriously when they do that. And I felt the same about the Woolly Bumblebee, that seemingly she's kind of switched position and I accept her right to do that, but it, it makes her the kind of person that I particularly wouldn't look to engage with because it seems as if their foundations are built upon sand. But then when I'm watching this video here, and I'm tying this video into responses that she's made to Bering and Sargon of Akkad, people that she sided with, and particularly a, criticized, a critical video she'd made against Sargon of Akkad a few months ago, well, I'd watched the video of Sargon's that she'd responded to, and I'd found fault with it. And I'm watching Willie Bumblebee's video, and she's picking on some of the things that I'd picked up, but also picking on lots of other things, the most petty, ridiculous, stupid non-points that didn't make any sense as if simply she wanted to find fault with every single word that Sargon had said throughout the entire video and I thought this is this is tribalism here she's saying it isn't and she's saying she's made a video that's kind of anti-tribalistic and look how free I am is that I'll have a go at anybody but actually she's She's taking all the bad things that you would take from that tribalistic approach and now just aiming it at a different argument, but it's still the same bad things. And I feel as if her change of heart isn't a genuine change of heart. She's just found a new group of friends. And she's apologised to Christy Winters for being so mean to her. Apologised to Steve Shives, apparently, for being so mean to him. And what concerns me is that she says in the video that actually all these things, right, all these things that she's been saying about the wage gap and patriarchy theory and all these things, actually she's not had a change of heart. Actually, she knew all along. She's trained in social studies, right, in, um, in social care, and that she learned about all these things and she understood them. And that effectively, all the arguments she's been making all these time, she was just doing for the social cachet. And yet she always, she never believed what she was saying, effectively. This is what I'm getting from this hangout, is that she's saying she never believed what she's saying. But now, now we can trust her. Now this is the real Wooly Bumblebee. Well, I've got to say, Wooly, maybe it is. And if it is, great. But the hardest thing to earn... On YouTube is not an audience, it's a reputation. And it's a reputation for being honest and for being trustworthy. Because there are so many shysters out there. So many people who are just full of bullshit and deception. That is the hardest thing to earn. And that is the easiest thing to lose. And when you tell me that the arguments that you've been making for the last few years, your heart wasn't in them. You felt that the arguments that you were trotting out, of your own volition, nobody was making you do it, were wrong. They were misguided, they were miscentered, and you didn't really believe them. I'm just saying to myself, how do I know... How, do I, how can I trust you that this is the real you, that what you're saying now your heart is actually in, and you're not just doing the same thing now that you said that you've been doing for the last few years. You know yourself what you actually believe. I don't. So effectively, I don't make anybody persona non grata, and I'm not going to do that now. But, but I don't see you as a person worthy to discuss things with or to argue with um, if if I don't even know that what you say is what you actually believe. Hell, at least with the likes of Christy Winters, I'm pretty convinced that what she says she actually fucking believes. But I can't even say that about the Wooly Bumblebee now. I, and that's a terrible thing to lose. To lose the trust of people on YouTube is something that it's almost impossible to get back again. I think that's all that I wanted to say with regard to that. Okay, that'll do. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.